Hello, longboarding mom. Today I am doing some water bathing. I'm making my homemade barbecue sauce from booze to barbecue sauce. It's um, whiskey, Kentucky bourbon. I bought the cheap kind because I'm just putting it in my barbecue sauce. And my sister's already done this. And she made a couple of batches. I don't know how many she made, but she ended up getting 12 jars out of it. And um, so I'm only going to do just a couple because I don't need 12 jars right now. <laughs> I've got limited space. So I'm just kind of playing and messing around and learning how to do this water bathing stuff. I've already made cheesecakes. I've made blueberry pie filling. Um, I've done cheesecakes twice. I've made cherry and blueberry. And if I have time today, I'm going to make um, caramel apple cheesecakes and some more blueberry because my husband loved the blueberry. And since I've got so many blueberries anyway, I might as well make some more maybe blueberry jam. I've never made jam. I mean, I made jam, like a freezer jam and stuff like that, but I've never canned it. So I'm so excited. You guys are going to follow along with my little journey and I'm learning. Um, so please be kind. I am getting a lot of my information from my sister who she gets this information from the Amish. I have got a couple canning things I want to show you guys because, you know, pressure canning has not always been around. Um, it only started in like 1988 that the FDA said, Hey, we've got to have guidelines on what you guys are doing at home. And we want you to follow these rules. Well, the Amish and my, I don't even know if my grandma did it, but you know, maybe way back when my great grandma and her mother and her mother all did water, water bathing. So I trust them. They were around and, you know, they learned a lot. So I know that we can do this. Um, you just got to be careful, right? And make sure that you're, you, you sterilize everything, which I've already got going. Got my honey in there because it was crystallizing. So I had my water boiling. So I went ahead and just dropped, you know, it's not boiling anymore. Um, but I just dropped my honey in there so I can get it soft enough so that I can get a couple tablespoons out of it to put in my barbecue sauce. It's got brown sugar, um, honey, ketchup, sriracha. And look, oh my gosh, the last bottle of sriracha I own because you can't find this brand anywhere. I had to buy... Excuse me, it's right here. Look at that. Chili Sriracha. Lee Kung Ki, Hong Kong. I don't know if it's gonna be the same as the Sriracha. So I thought I'd try it though because you can't find this anymore. So anyway, let's get started on my homemade booze to barbecue sauce recipe. In this big saucepan here, I've got some butter sauteing. I'm going to dump six tablespoons of onions in there so I can saute that. And I need two cloves of garlic. And my garlic over there is not ready to be used, so I'm going to use this one. And this says that a half a teaspoon for each clove of garlic for which your recipe requires. That's a half a tablespoon. I better find a one teaspoon. And I'm gonna do a heaping teaspoon because I like a lot of garlic. So we're gonna get that sauteed up and then we're gonna add the remaining ingredients. You can use um, onions 
dehydrated onions. I think that's what the recipe called for when I first found the recipe, but I didn't have dehydrated onions in, and so I just chopped up some onions, and my sister and I sauteed them up with some garlic, and um, that's how we made our recipe. So I have not tried... I think I tried the chopped onions in my other recipe when I made it for you guys. I can't remember. I cook so much and I do things differently each time. So, except for my pizza crust. I will never try another pizza crust again. I tried a different one and it was good, but my family was like, mm, Mom, we like yours better. So, I will stick to my pizza crust. I've got it down. That's what they said. You know your pizza crust. You know how to make it. My honey. Coming along quite nicely. I need a couple tablespoons of that. These are soft and I don't want them like caramelized. I just want them soft. So I'm gonna turn this down. I'm gonna add the other ingredients. I need two cups of ketchup. I need 12 tablespoons of brown sugar. Oh, excuse me. My husband the other day in that video that was hilarious I was picking blueberries and he comes up behind me and makes that noise so nice of him so there's one cup of ketchup I know it's just a little over. It's okay. These measurements really don't have to be exact like baking. You know, baking, you have to be exact. You want to measure it out. You want to weigh it out. Some people weigh out. I, I just measure. So we've got two cups of ketchup. I'm just doubling this recipe just to practice. It calls for... A quarter of a cup, but I've got a half a cup here of whiskey. Right in. I've got my brown sugar. That's table, like cute little tablespoons. Oops, almost. Ah! Gosh, I'm such a mess. Okay, dump that in there before I lose them. And I need water. Only two tablespoons of water, so I dumped it in there so I wouldn't lose it. Two tablespoons of honey. There's one. Yes. It's really warm. And two. Um, it calls for a half a teaspoon of, no, a quarter of a teaspoon, but we're doubling it. So half a teaspoon. <gasps> oh no, I did one teaspoon of mustard. You know what? That's okay. But let's get the sriracha right. A half a teaspoon. 
<laughs> Look, I've used them so much, I've lost the writing on them, some of them. There we go. And you can put more sriracha in here if you like your barbecue sauce a little spicy. And that is it for all my ingredients. So let's stir them all together. And I'm going to turn it up just a little bit. Mm, it smells so good. I can smell that bourbon in there. Mm. See, some of those onion slices, I should have made a little bit smaller. I did not use the knife that I normally use, my favorite knife. Um, so I did not chop them as small as I normally get them. Go figure, huh? So what do you think? I think this is going to be three jars. I was hoping to get six jars. Hmm. Three jars is fine. Maybe I'll just make more pie filling. Whoops, pie filling and fill the rest of the jars. The blueberry pie filling. No, I might. I did that in my instant pot. No, because those are ten minutes. This is going to take fifteen minutes in the water bath. My sister said because it's a little thicker than other stuff. So she did 15 minutes. So this is going to take 30 minutes to simmer once it starts simmering. I'm going to clean up the mess. It's boiling. Oh. It has been 15 minutes. Oops. It is thickening up quite nicely. I did add um, one more batch to this because I didn't like the onion ratio. And I still don't like how big the onions are, so I'm probably going to drop this into the blender and just give it a couple whirls before I um, put it in the little jars and start water bathing them. So that is my plan. I'm not going to show you all that noise, but when it's all done, I will show you how I put it in the jars and clean them up and put them in my new pan. Well, you guys saw me take that sticker off. I had a smaller one of these and um, I could only fit a couple jars in it at a time. And so I will use that one for tamales and stuff. And that's the one I can use for tamales. I can fit more tamales in it. And it's got a nice little rack inside of it, which is really nice. Yeah, see that handle right there? You can pull the jars up and everything, I think. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to try to pull the jars up. I'm going to use my little jar removal that I bought. So we've got another probably 15 minutes for this to simmer. And then, like I said, I'm going to drop it in the blender and give it a couple whirls. I don't want the onions to be smithereens I just want them a little bit smaller so and I've got an old old blender that I love and trust I've had for years it's like a Walmart blender and the blades are freaking amazing on them I just I just love that blender anyway we'll be back in a little bit I don't have a huge kitchen um this pot does not fit on the back over there and you know this is my burner that just extremely boils so I'm hoping that it works okay. My other pot fit fine back there. Um, this is my blender and I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, the onion is much finer. I just put it on chop for like two or three seconds. I didn't let it go for very long. I just wanted the mixture like swirled up and that was it. I knew it was done. So I have got my jars in here. They're still hot. Um, I got some extra hot water over here that I'm going to dump in here after I get my jars out, get it boiling, and get them in there. So let me set this here. Um, I'm nervous. I'm usually not nervous. I've got my... And these 
these I've already boiled as well. I just got them out so that they would dry. But I, um, you want your jars warm, so when you put the hot stuff in them, um, you can put them back in the hot water so that they don't crack. You know, cold and hot, you'll crack your jars. So we have glass cups at work and um, we put hot coffee in them. They're actually coffee mugs and they're glass jars like this. I mean, like, not jars, they're glass mugs. And they're, um, you put your hot coffee in them and if you don't have a spoon in them um, on a cold day, you'll crack that glass right down that seam. And one time I had a spoon in the glass and I was pouring hot coffee in it and it literally, literally cracked. Luckily it was on a tray, so all that hot coffee stayed on the tray. Okay. So these are wet all around. I wanna get them dry. I'm gonna turn this back on though. Wait. I know I'm gonna need more water. You want an inch above those jars. So hopefully, if I added too much water to them, I'm, I'll take some out. But um, I'm going to get that boiling again. Um, I'm just going to dry my jars really good. And you want to make sure everything is sterile. jars lids got wet again so make sure they're all dry and I have this nifty little thing here so you stick that right in there and huh. we are going to pour to just below the line there because you want to leave some room there we go and if you do it really carefully you don't make a mess i got some on me and you know what i don't want to splatter That one I filled a little too full. Look at that. I'm making my own homemade barbecue sauce. Okay, that's three. I thought I was gonna get three. I'm hoping to get six. doesn't fill up all the way I'm going to use it for dinner tonight we'll have some barbecue chicken lids on and you want to hand tighten not too tight but tight enough that they'll seal
some jams and jellies. I'm not sure if I was supposed to poke like you want to get all the air out and stuff. I, I don't know if you do that on these or not. Like jams and jellies and um, what was it that I made the other day? Oh, my chili. The chili I did. Um, you want to take something ster that's sterile and, and poke it down into your, your item so that it doesn't have any air bubbles and stuff in it. So I don't know if you're supposed to do that with this. I think it filled up pretty nicely. And this one's not quite so full, but I'm going to stick it in there anyway. And we'll probably use this one tonight. Let's see. It is not quite boiling, so let's give it like five more minutes. I bet it'll start boiling. We'll get these jars in. Well, it's getting there, but it's taking some time. So when you're canning, they recommend you keep it on a low simmer so that your water is ready to go. And I thought I did, but I had added that pitcher of water and forgot that that was just hot water from my tap, not boiling water. So it is taking just, you know, it did take five minutes for it to start boiling. So we're getting ready to put them in the water. bit more than an inch over. I'm still learning this, like the depth perception. Exciting to know you are making your own stuff, right? We are going to set our timer for 15 minutes and um, we'll come back in 15 minutes, pull these jars out, stick them back on my towel. Um, well, I, no wait, after the 15 minutes I'm going to turn off the water and we'll let them cool for just a little bit and then probably I think 5 minutes. I'm going to have to read my little um, jar thingy. They have directions on like the mason jar ball um, boxes that when you buy the jars there's actually water bathing instructions and um, pressure cooking instructions on how to do things and stuff. But I recommend you watch videos, ask your sister or your mom and dad, your grandma and grandpa, um, the Amish community, definitely if you live near them. I'm sure they would love to teach you how to um, can and do some of the things that they do. You know, they it's a lost art to learn how to preserve your own food and stuff. So I'm sure they would be extremely happy to help you do that stuff. So let's give it some time and we'll be back here in a little bit. Timer went off. I am going to turn off my stove. I'm going to take the lid off and let it sit for about five minutes. I still didn't look. I was looking up other stuff. I'm going to look at that really fast. So I'm going to 
Turn that off. And just let it sit there and cool for five to ten minutes. I'm going to check that out and I will post it up there for you guys to see how many minutes I'm going to set that for. And then we'll come back and take it out, um, carefully take the jars out and set them on the counter. Let them cool the rest of the way for up to 12 hours. Um, it can take for them to ping. Hopefully they start pinging right away. That noise is so addicting if you've ever canned before. And I found a PDF file that I'm going to read to you guys. And I'll um, probably put it in my uh, community page so you guys can read that as well. Using blueberries. These are frozen. I just took them out of the freezer and put them in my Ziploc baggies. I've dated them. There's two and a half cups in each one of them. It's just a little bit smaller, almost two and a half cups. Um, and I'm still not done. I've got another little container that I need to clean and freeze and put in the freezer and then go pick more blueberries. That's just crazy. So my timer is up. Oh, in 14 seconds. So I'm going to put these in the freezer and I'll be right back. Okay, those are in the freezer and the ones that I'm going to process today, I'm going to make blueberry cheesecakes. I was going to make cherry, but my husband's like, he's in love with the blueberries right now. They're so good. My tongue last night was um, purple, blue from the blueberries I was eating. I was packaging them and they are delicious cold. If you've never had cold blueberries before. So I'm going to take these out of the water. I'm trying to get a lot of that water off the top of them. I'm going to take a paper towel and carefully dab the, the rest of the water off of them. That's the one that was not full. I'm going to set that up front because I'm going to use that one tonight. I think I'm going to make some barbecue chicken with my barbecue sauce. Okay. Well, I do not know if I did these right. This is a new, a new pan and it took a while for it to start boiling. So I'm worried. So we'll see if they didn't, if they don't pop, I'll just give some of these jars. I'll take them to work and we'll make um, cheeseburgers out of them. Oh, I did that one time and they were so good. My boss loved it. So and I made enough I could share with everybody, right? That's the whole point. So, um, none of them popped yet. Sometimes they do. They just need to cool a little bit more. So, I just took them out of them. Ah! One popped. I don't know which one. I don't know which one. I'm so excited. That was exciting. Okay. So, once they all pop, they that's another one, Justine. That doesn't mean it's sealed. When, like, 12 hours from now, you want to un untwist it and try to pull the top off and if the top falls off it's not sealed if it stays on you sealed it so let's wait and see two or three of them already pinged i only got like three more i can't wait you guys i'm gonna move on to making cheesecakes oh wait i want to read something to you first let me grab it um and i'll post it up here so you guys can see or probably in front while i'm reading this um so this is Something I got off of the Rebel Canning site on Facebook. Um, oh shoot, I just I just uh, looked at it and um, they have temporarily like paused the page. I think they got a lot of people telling other people what to do, and that's not what that page was all about. It was about asking, like basically showing your work and being proud of it, and maybe asking for advice, not just being like, you get it wrong. You know, there's a lot of people out there that do that. Um, what works in your area may not work in another area because, you know, elevations and stuff like that. There is a, so much to canning that um, you never, you never can do it the same twice. I'm going to say, because like my father-in-law lived at a higher elevation. And when he moved down here to the, the ocean, we're almost at, um, I don't know, 20 something feet or something like that. It's going to be different in the Rocky Mountains than it is down here. So 
what works for one person may not work for another person. So be kind to each other when you're canning. So here it is, history of water bath canning, low acid foods is what this says. Um, canning has been around for a long time and we didn't always have the recommendations of pressure canning low acid foods. In 1917, the USDA started the recommendation of using a pressure canner for low acid foods. Probably due to cost of a pressure canner, people often steal water bath and um, low acid foods. Even canning cookbooks from big names such as Ball and Kerr didn't start to really force the recommendation of pressure canning until about the 1980s. We couldn't pinpoint the exact year, but we know of cookbooks in the late 1970s that still had water bath conversion charts. This cookbook instruction also noted that you should boil the contents of your water bath low acid, acid jars for 10 to 15 minutes before consuming. This kills botulism that may have formed. To this day, people still water bath low acid foods and people in other countries still use various other methods of home food preservation passed down from generations. And then it says, please note, and this is in red, the following charts are for historical educational purposes only and is not recommended by the USDA that you pressure can low acid foods. Use your own discretion when canning. And I, like I said, that's what you need to do. So there is um, water bath times and pressure canner times and the number of pressure. And I still don't know what the number of pressure means. Oh, minutes, the number of minutes. Okay, got it. So I, I just call my sister and go, how long do I do this? How long do I do that? But you've got your meat and your vegetables and stuff. So I'm gonna um, show you guys this. And um, it sounded like all of them pinged. It looks like they're all down. So yay, yay, let's go on to canning more cheesecakes. And um, I think I'm gonna have to make some more blueberry uh, pie filling to can. 